everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts, and today I'm going to be featuring one new stamp set from the latest Scrappy Tales Home is Where Mom is release. It's actually not this one, but I am going to use it for my first card. That one was called Spring Birds, but for all three of my cards today, I am using this set here called Mama Birds, and this includes five hummingbirds and a couple Mother's Day bird punny sentiments. So I'm going to start by coloring up the birds. Um, you can see I went ahead and colored the tree branch from Spring Birds already. I think I already showed that in a video. So I'm just going to show you how I color up these hummingbirds. I do think I zoom in fairly shortly here. But hummingbirds are actually really fun to color because they come in very bright colors. So I kind of stuck with green, purple, pink, and blue and sort of like a blue green color for all of my hummingbirds and I did look at photo references because I do want these to look realistic as you can see I'm using my Copic markers and I do have the caps on screen but I am coloring quite fast here so I'm going to try to list out the markers that I used in the video description for all of the beaks and the feet for the most part I am using gray because I did notice that hummingbirds have gray beaks and feet, but as I mentioned, they come in so many vibrant colors, and I haven't used my Copics in a while because I have to purchase a lot of refills for the markers I use a lot, but I actually don't use my blues or my blue-greens or even my purples very often, so it was nice to actually color with filled markers, and I love, I mean, out of any coloring medium. I think coloring with alcohol markers is an absolute dream for blending and I knew that I was going to be changing color families on all of these birds. So this one is a better blend because it goes from like a dark blue to a blue green but the bird above it has some purples and greens and blues and I'm switching and blending those colors together. So right now I'm going in with a white gel pen. A couple of the hummingbirds my grandma drew a lot of detail on them. Well, all of them have detail, but a couple of the birds have what look like scales on their tummies and on the top of their heads. Those are actually feathers, and that's actually what really makes these look like hummingbirds. So I did go over those feathers that kind of look like scales with the white gel pen just to make them look like they're glistening or shimmering in the light, because if you do look at hummingbird references, or if you're lucky to even see hummingbirds, even though they're the fastest bird, um, I think. So they're very quick, you might not get a glimpse of them, but I have seen photos where their bellies look like they just shine. So I wanted to emulate that with the white gel pen. So those first two birds I showed were more cool tones. There were a lot of blues and purples. These I wanted to add more green and pink. And I really love how that one bird off to the right turned out. I love the pink and the green together and the bottom or the inside part of its wings was actually brown and I was not thrilled to add brown to these really bright birds but I think that it kind of made it more neutral and I love how it turned out so I went ahead on this one and went with a gray tipped tail wing and the gray inside the wings and I do like how that also turned out. Again, I'm going to go in with my white gel pen. I don't always do this with my coloring. It kind of just depends on my mood, but I did want these hummingbirds to be the star on all three of my cards, so I did decide to use that on all of them. So for my first card, I want to use this bird bath from Spring Birds and I left this part of the video in because I know this has happened to other people and basically um, as I mentioned, I have to refill a lot of my markers, including my gray markers. So before I started coloring this birdbath, because it is a large image, I went ahead and did that. So all of them were filled at this point, and I'm getting a nice blend so far. But my C2 apparently was already filled, and I just assumed that it wasn't because I use it a lot. And so I just made a mess everywhere and completely... Um, ruined all of my blending. I wish that happened like on the first or second color, but unfortunately it's the very last marker I use. And I was even debating if I needed to use it because as you can see, I'm going in now with C4 and I feel like I could have just carried that all the way through and it still would have looked really good. 
but of course I love just the tiniest amount of white still showing and here you can see it's already leaking before I went in and started blending with it I did try to wipe off most of it onto a baby wipe but unfortunately you can see it still made a huge mess and ruined my blending. Some of you might say it looks okay, but in real life, it just looks super blotchy. So off camera, I went ahead and redid that. Um, I even took off the back of the cap to like release the pressure, but it was just so overfilled. Um, so what I did was I left it uncapped for about an hour and that seemed to resolve the issue, but I still ended up wasting a lot of ink. So definitely, I think the trick is to do nine drops when your um, marker is close to dead and never let it go to the point of when it's dead because you can definitely ruin your nibs. In fact, I have to replace several nibs on my markers because I didn't take that advice. So yeah, definitely do it when you already kind of start to see the tip going white. Don't try to get like whatever inks left on the bottom of the nib because you will definitely ruin them. So while I was rambling, I went ahead and added some clouds to this slimline rectangle background. I've done this several times on my channel. I used a Simon Says Stamp Cloud stencil for that. Here I have some grass from the Scrappy Tails Everyday Border die set. I cut it from lime green cardstock and I trimmed it down so that it works on this vertical style card. And because I trimmed it down, I was able to get two layers of grass. So I'm going to glue down the back layer to the panel and then I'll pop up this front layer with foam tape. And I do want to mention with the bird bath and I don't know why I didn't do it, but I went with like an empty bird bath, um, but you can definitely put water in it if you want. I think that would be really pretty and that would have added another color. So here I have my tree branch and I have my three hummingbirds that I wanted to add into the scene, but I did want to trim down this um, bird bath so I can put it deeper into the grass and have more of my branch showing at the top. And then I'm going to have this hummingbird like about to land on the bird bath or on the grass in front of it. I do love how my grandma drew a couple sitting hummingbirds and some, you know, actually flying. So you can really use these for scene building. I am going to add a couple flowers to this tree branch and these do come in the Spring Birds stamp set. As you can see, I already have foam tape behind the elements that I want to pop up. And I'm just laying out the scene one more time because I'm going to glue this flying um, hummingbird below the branch first because I want that to be glued straight onto the panel. I added a couple more flowers just to fill in the tree branch and then I'll go ahead and glue down this hummingbird. And I did glue it a little bit too high. I wish I moved it a little bit lower more towards the bird bath but you'll see how I fix that. I'll kind of fill in that open area with more flowers. So now I'm just popping up my bird bath, which by the way is a really nice size. Um, it takes up an entire A2 card. It works very well with rose trellis, which I featured in another video earlier last week. Um, and because it's a six by eight stamp, even this tree branch is a nice size. So if you're new to scene building, I think both the spring birds and the rose trellis stamp set are really great springtime scene building sets. All right, so here you can see I have a couple more flowers and I thought they would be cute to add to make it look like they were falling off of the tree branch. And that again kind of fills in the space. And then I will go ahead and stamp out my sentiment, which I chose from the Mama Bird stamp set. This says, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. You make life tweet. I stamped that with VersaFine Onyx Black ink and now I'm just going to matte this entire panel on a light blue scalloped slimline rectangle. And that's just going to frame it really nicely. I like that the blue ties in with the little bit of blue that's in the background sky. And then that is going to finish off my first card. Okay, and here is a close up. And now we are going to move on to the second card. 
And I use the new Layering Daisies die set from the Home Is Where Mom Is release. And right now I'm just gluing the centers onto all of the petals. I did cut the petals from light yellow cardstock and the centers from like an orange yellow cardstock. I didn't want the centers to be too distracting. And I love that daisies come in all kinds of colors. And I thought that the yellow would be a nice bright color for a pop-up vase that I'm going to be creating for this card. And you can see on to the top center portion of this video, I have the stemmed leaves cut. So on a couple of these, I am going to add some stems, not to all of them because some of these I'm going to glow lower down in the vase and you really don't need any green below them because you're not going to see it. So I just chose a couple, mainly the big and medium size. And then I also die cut the I Love You Mom sentiment circle from the new Mother's Day Circle Sentiments. In that set, you get two dies, one that says I Love You Mom, which is what I'm using, and then one that says Happy Mother's Day. And I went ahead and glued a gold I Love You Mom on top of a white one just to add a little bit more sturdiness. And I'm going to glue both circles to a pattern paper circle which is actually a Spellbinders 6x6 pattern paper, and it's very, very thin. So that's why I doubled up the die cut, and I'm also going to add a circle in between them that I cut from 110-pound white cardstock. I'm also going to slip in an acrylic stick between the two circles, and the reason I did front to back is because the vase is 360, so you're going to see it from both sides. Right now I am taping up the panels that I'm going to decorate my vase with and I cut these from that same pattern paper I used to back the two circle sentiments. I thought that was a good way to tie in the paper and as I mentioned this is a very flimsy paper so I'm being careful with my tape runner to try to not um, rip or kind of bend the paper but it ended up being fine, so I added them to my two vase bases that I cut from 110 pound white cardstock. I'm going to add strong double sided tape to each tab, and then I'll go ahead and reinforce all of the score lines on the vase. And to attach these two pieces together, all you do is tape the one tab to the opposite panel on the side without the tab. So that's what I'm doing here, and then you can just close it up by bringing both ends together. I know this is going super fast. Um, I do have a lot of slowed down tutorials on my channel, but this is already a super long video, so I did speed it up quite a bit. I do have four bridges that I die cut from the die set, and I'm adding double-sided tape to all of the tabs. And the way you attach these in is you pick a point on the vase, and then you glue one tab, skip the next point, glue the other tab. So as I said, this is going super fast. Definitely check out my other video. I'll have it linked in the eye. But again, for this bridge, I'm going to glue it right next to the one I just added on that same point, skip the next point, and then I'll glue the tab to the following point. So I'm going to add my third bridge in now. And what I like about this is if you add all four in, you don't have to put four in, but it is going to make your vase look symmetrical. And it's also, as you can see, rounding out that octagon into like the perfect shape for a vase. And if you're left with that star, then you're good to go. All right, so I want to add grass to each of the eight panels on this vase. So I'm trimming down my grass and it's actually double layered here. So I just cut both of them at once and I'm gluing each of these behind each panel. I did cut them all down. You can score them if you want, but because those bridges are already in, I decided to cut them all down. Um, but you can definitely avoid that if you add the grass in before the bridges. But this ended up working out just fine. I really like how that looks. You can also add grass to the bridges if you want. I decided to add this tall grass in from Spring Essentials instead. And I knew a lot of my flowers was going to cover the bridges so I didn't worry too much about it. 
So I first always add my larger images inside my vases. So I'm going to add the I Love You Mom first, and I tried to glue it as close to the center as possible, but more towards the left. And then I'm going to glue down my larger daisies first. So I added one right in front of the grass. I'll add one to the left. And it's all about kind of just slowly building up the bouquet. I do like to circle around the vase as opposed to sticking to one area at a time, just so that it doesn't look too concentrated in one area. I am adding my birds as I go because they're also a large element and I do want them to be the focal point. So I am strategically placing them where I think they'll look nicest. And I do oftentimes move things around so I do recommend this three-in-one glue that I'm using. It's really great because it gives you some wiggle room. It takes several minutes to dry, so you can definitely move things as you go. And once it is dry, it is super strong. So this flying bird, I wanted it to look like it was flying to the sentiment, so I added it onto an acrylic stick. These are 12 by 12 clear sheets that I cut down into quarter inch or half inch strips. So for that large circle, I used a half inch strip and for the bird, I only used a quarter inch strip. So I base it on how heavy the object is that I'm popping up. But most of the time I stick with the quarter inch strips and from one 12 by 12 sheet, I can get about 50 pop-up cards. So a little goes a long way here. Right now I'm adding in my small daisies now so you can see that I finished up all of the larger images and right now I am just kind of filling in all those areas with my slightly smaller daisies. Again, rotating the vase as I add these in just so that everything kind of looks evenly dispersed. I'm trying to hide the white behind some of these die cuts so I am adding daisies to the back of that flying bird on the other side. And here I'm at my final stages, so I'm just kind of slowly turning it, seeing where I need to add more flowers. And I think that's my last one, or this one is. And I really like how that turned out. The yellow flowers with the blue look super nice, very bright and cheerful. And that's actually going to finish off my second card. And in case you're wondering, I ended up using about 20 flowers and the die set cuts out 11. So I just had to cut it out twice from yellow cardstock and all of my flowers were made. So that's really nice. So for my final card, I want to create a cute little birdhouse. So I have the pop-up birdhouse die set here and I have two panels cut to three and a half by six and a half. So I'm going to make these birdhouses into mini slim lines but know that you can create a full-size slimline card with this die set. I'm also going to cut out some more layering daisies and these I wanted um, white. So I have an A2 panel and then the centers I'm going to cut from this dark blue cardstock as well as the heart frame. You can see I already cut the heart from one of the panels on the birdhouse. I also added a wood grain background to this and I somehow lost the footage for that but I used the new slimline wood grain background die to add some white wood grain to my gray house and now I'm going to add a gray roof line and two gray bird perches that all come in this die set. You also get the cutouts for the windows so you can either do a circle or a heart and then you also get the heart frame and a flower circle frame if you want to go with the circle. But I thought the heart would be cute for this smaller size. So I did go ahead and add my perches. I did end up cu um, cutting the roof line. You don't have to. And in this point, I really wanted to do a mini slim line, but some of my birds overhang. So this turned into an A7 card. Right now I'm adding acetate behind this heart frame and I'm going to make this into a shaker. So instead of using foam tape, I cut the same frame from heavyweight white cardstock four times. And I'm just going to layer those white frames behind the teal color to create the well for my shaker bits. And then on this or behind this final heart, I'm going to add some more acetate after I add my shaker bits. And since this is such a small shaker window, I just went with some seed beads. I added too many here, so I'm going to put some of them back. And then I just add like 
maybe five or six little star sequins. I don't want to overfill this because I do want to add a bird behind the window and I still want you to be able to see that. So once my shaker bits are in, I added some more acetate behind that final white heart frame. And then I'm going to glue that shaker window right over that cutout. Very, very cute. So now I have my layering daisies and you can actually shape these if you want. If you have like a mouse pad and a stylus tool, you can do a lot better than what I just did. I just used the back of my palm to give the petals some more dimension. So I'm going to add a couple of these daisies around the heart frame and some of them towards the bottom left where I'm also going to tuck in a hummingbird. I chose the hummingbirds with more blue in them just because I felt like they matched better. But if you want to go with a traditional birdhouse with browns, the other birds would look really cute as well. But because these are all cool tones, I thought that the blue birds would look the best. All right, so now I'm just gluing down the flowers flat and off camera I'm going to add foam tape behind these birds to pop them up. Oh, and you know what? Actually, I used scraps to pop them up. And that took quite a while to do, so I spared that. But here you can see the wings are going off the card base here, and I just could not clip their wings. It would have been devastating for me. So this is now an A7 card. I am just not quite on board the mini slimline train yet. I think they're really cute, but I think the size is almost too small for me. I'm definitely have to play around with it more. Maybe I just need smaller images to work with. But here, I wanna show you guys how you can make this into a pop-up. So I have two of these um, connector pieces that I cut, and it's very easy. You just fold in the tabs on the sides and then pinch the center to create an accordion fold. And I think if you guys rewatch that, a couple times you'll see how that's done. It's very easy to more so look at what I'm doing versus what I'm saying. Um, I do have another slow down version tutorial on my channel that I'll link to as well. Um, but this is probably the easiest pop-up that we've released so far. It's literally just an accordion fold and this pop-up folds flat as opposed to the side. And you can even add a third connector to the bottom, I think. Don't quote me on that, I haven't tried it yet. Um, but I think you can make this into a gift box and I'll probably show that soon on my channel. So I want this other bird to peek through the window and I kind of want it to be closer to the window. So you can definitely just glue it to the back of the panel, which I've done in a couple of my samples. But I want to try this out with the bridge. So I added my bridge to each corner of one connector and so I'm gluing each tab to each corner of this connector. So I did slow this down so you can see what I'm doing, but I, of course I'm kind of off camera here, but it's very similar to the other bridges that we have in our pop-ups. So you just stick that in to one of the connectors. You can add another one if you want to the other side, but I only needed the one. So I'm going to glue my hummingbird to the front of the bridge and that's just going to move it closer to the window it's not so far away and like i said completely optional you don't have to use the bridge all right so i do want to decorate the back of this because there's no sentiment currently on the front so i have an a7 gift card holder this is another scrappy tails die I cut it from that same dark teal cardstock i am adding double-sided tape to the tabs and you just fold all of those tabs in and I'm gluing it onto a gray stitched rectangle. And then I cut this wood grain heart from the base panel. Um, so I kept it and added it right to the center of that gift card holder. And to add my sentiment to the card, I again went with the Happy Mother's Day Mom, you make life tweet. I'm going to white heat emboss it. I felt like black would have been too stark, especially because there's no other black on the card. So I'll just go ahead and heat set that. And I really love the simplicity of this. I could definitely see myself adding this to the back of all of my pop-ups. It just finishes 
the card off very nicely and here I'll pull in a gift card so that you can see it it's a perfect snug little gift card holder I love it so and there's that little shaker window which is another fun interactive element on an already interactive card all right and I do want to show you that you can use this die to create flat cards with fun open windows so here um, I created this off camera. It's a full slimline size and it's actually the card base. So when you open it, you can see the sentiments that are peeking through the front windows, which is another really cute um, option. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in the other two cards that I created. Let me know which one is your favorite. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post my next video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.